What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to y'all as often as possible with as many interviews as possible. So please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share it, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one. And if you notice, we just got that membership thing active. So hit that too. It's right next to the subscribe. It's at join. So please join us there. Now, today we have the honor and privilege of interviewing, speaking with, and talking with Dazzy D. Thank you for coming through, sir. Oh, man. Thanks for having me, brother. I appreciate you. Yeah, man. And uh, today we're going to talk about Coolio, who recently passed away, a rap icon. You know, I wrote about him extensively over the years. I met him. Dub C introduced me to him. Uh, so I chopped it up with them, all this stuff. And uh, Dazzy D, of course, worked with them uh, over the years on my side in particular. So Dazzy D, I wanted you, let's talk uh, generally first. What, as you think back now that Coolio's passed, what's kind of his importance and his legacy to rap? I mean, he was really, to me, he was one of the first gangster rap artists, man, that made it global. You know what I'm saying? He made it, he made it acceptable uh, to all walks of life. You know what I'm saying? You know, you had Cube and NWA, you know, they were a little, uh, they were a little more aggressive than Coolio. You know what I'm saying? Even Gangster Paradise was aggressive, but it still had that angelic sound going on. So it was, you know, it was, it was, it was acceptable. And, uh, Everything Coolio did, man, he was straight hood. You know what I'm saying? He, he was from he was from the hood, so it, it's not like you know he didn't have uh, he wasn't irreparable. But all his music, man, was really palatable. It was really like you know you could you could really dig Coolio's work, man. And I think that'd be to me that's his legs. Yeah, and you know I knew him more from musically speaking, at least coming through with the Dub C and the Mad Circle and the Damn Thing Change album which is one of my favorite albums of all time. And I think, you know, when you look at like Dress Code or County Line or Ghetto Serenade or You Don't Work, You Don't Eat, all these songs, and then you get the uh, County Line and Sticky Fingers before we get to a <laughs> fantastic voyage, it's a yeah. very different Coolio than we see that the masses knew Coolio. Yeah. So, so for you, Dazzy D, I wanted you to explain knowing him and seeing him kind of grow and develop over the years to speak on more the gangster side, the, the county line, the you don't work, you don't eat angle of Coolio that a lot of people didn't understand or appreciate as much as maybe the, the big, the super pop star Coolio. Well, you know, I mean, everybody from the hood, no, no county line and all that, you know, saying mass circle. So, you know, he, he, he definitely was a reputable in that area. Uh, like I said, man, County Line, all that mass circle stuff, even his verse on You Don't Work, You Don't Eat, you know, that was Coolio, man. That was Compton. You know what I'm saying? That was, that was the Compton side of Coolio. And um, it, it, it made it, it, he made it work, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, like for real, bro. Like he, like his sound was so universal. His, his voice was damn near perfect. His flow was simple, but you know what I'm saying? He still had wordplay. So, you know, he was just, he was just a hood dude, man. And like you said, as he progressed, he started figuring it out. You know what I'm saying? Like he still kept it hood. Like even his uh, most popular songs were still hood. Uh, he just knew how to put a little spin on it. Yeah, because I remember uh, Fantastic Voyage in particular when he was like, ain't no blood and ain't no cripping, all that. I was like, whoa, exactly. he's putting that on a single? Okay. Exactly. <laughs> feel me? See, that, that, that's what I'm saying. You feel me? <laughs> And I thought it was also kind of smooth and, and smart to him where it says it doesn't matter if you're black or white, too, because he was just showing yeah. like, hey, you know, everybody come along and ride. You know, it's like exactly. This, this exactly. For everybody. And that 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 was his that was the the mentality. And that's what made him so smart as a as an artist, man, like for real, like for real, bro, like. You know, like I can go back to Cube, man, and like even though Cube had a crossover appeal, it was just more of a. Uh, a popularity thing, you know, say Q coming off NWA. So, you know, people kind of gravitated towards Q because of the popularity. Coolio didn't start with popularity. Coolio started from the hood. And as Coolio progressed, he started having, have, having to figure it out in his head. Like, okay, I can still take the hood with me. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and he got away with it. And that's what made it so dope. 
right. And then for you working with Coolio on, on My Side in particular, why at that time did you do this song? Why did you reach out to him to be on it? How did that happen? Oh, it was crazy, man. Um, what happened was on my side, if you like listen to the flow and the vibe of the album, it, I mean, the song, it was supposed to be a a, a Dazzy D feature in Compton's Most Wanted record. With the chill on uh, there. Uh, chill came to the studio, A didn't make it. So uh, we sat around a couple of hours and, you know, realized A wasn't gonna show. So Coolio happened to be right in the studio next door to us. I think I might've been in Studio B and he was in Studio A. And he came out, you know, to take a little uh, smoke break and I caught him outside. I was like, hey, Coolio, come jump on this record with us. And he was like, man, it's nothing. And he went in there, man. He didn't even sit, you know, he didn't, you know how some artists are sitting, listen to the B for 10, 15 minutes, rock out to it and then start writing. Man, he grabbed the pen and the pad and man, just sat down and automatically, automatically start writing. I was like, whoa. And man, he came up with the verse, homie, me and Chill looked at each other like, yeah, that, it'll work, that'll do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because uh, one of the, things I also think is great about Coolio is, you know, he worked with Razkaz. He, he did stuff yeah. with J Row from the Alcoholics. I mean, he was in addition, of course, to the stuff he did with Dub C, but he definitely, mm -hmm. I think was a little more revered than people realized by the actual hardcore slash reputable LA artists. Cause it, exactly, he, exactly. Coolio, Coolio can rap, man. Coolio can rap. You know, he's not one of them brothers, man, that the cross, you know, the, the pop appeal took him to the next level. Coolio can rap. Yeah. And I think, too, it's also crazy because uh, the first time I ever had a chance to travel really overseas uh, when I was in college, I remember this was 96 and they had Coolio. They were advertising for Gangster's Paradise in the subway in Paris. And I had never been overseas. I'd never seen anything. And to go to another country and they were promoting it was a lot of Tommy Boy so that was part of it, I'm sure. But the fact that mm -hmm. Coolio was plastered all over Paris, I was like, yeah. it's bigger than I even could imagine, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I heard uh, my brother was telling me right before he passed, man, he had just came off tour from over there, man. They said he was like damn near everywhere, all around the world for a couple of months, man. So he, he, was, he was still doing it overseas, man. Yeah. And what, you know, talking to Coolio, being around him, seeing him, just knowing of him, what, like, what did you kind of learn or pick up from him artistically or personally? Like I said, he 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 knew how to take the hood with him, man. And I think I think that that taught me the most. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to you don't have to change who you are, what you're doing. Just figure out a way to make it, you know, digestible. You see what I'm saying? And I think that's the biggest thing I took away from Kuna. As far as his, his attitude and his personality, man, he was so he was a humble dude, man. He he really didn't he really didn't take anything for granted. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you could see him being so appreciative of the mass circle situation, the verse he got to do on Ice Cube, you know what I'm saying, signing the Tommy Boy. Everything was just so he was just appreciative of everything that that was given to him, man, or that he earned. So that's that, that's so dope about that dude. Rest in peace to him, man. Yeah, because I see if I can see it correctly, it looks like you do have the death certificate plaque back there, the platinum plaque. So yeah, 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 yeah. I have a few of them, man. I got about four or five on one wall, man. Yeah, and Coolio was on Colorblind, of course, on that album. Yes, yeah. yes. And that's I think one of the best rap songs ever made. But I wanted you to speak uh on Coolio being on such a political song, talking about gang banging and talking about death and destruction in a way, not clearly not glorifying it, but really examining it and how it's affecting the community. When you heard, yeah. you know, hearing something like that coming from Coolio and Dub and everybody that's on that record, Cam King, T Cube, et cetera. That's, yeah. I mean, it's just, when you hear a song like Colorblind, what does that do for you as a, as a person, as a listener? I, I, well, first of all, all, all of them was the homies. All of them are the homies. So, so to hear the homies really get it off, because, you know, that's really one of the first rec records where Cube kind of came and grabbed everybody from the camp. They said, okay, let, let, let's do this song. And uh, just to hear Coolio get his off, to hear Cam, to hear Threat, to hear JD, you know what I'm saying, to hear everybody get theirs off, man, it was dope, homie. And, and it was real, it was actual, factual, because... You know, even though we we, the, we were the lynch mob, we were still from different segments, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so to hear Coolio 
verse speaking from a Compton's point of view, hearing Dub C from a and JD from a LA point of view. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it was just dope, homie. Yes, it was phenomenal piece. So now, yeah. uh, you know, what are your kind of summary or, or wrap up overall thoughts about Coolio and his legacy? Like I said, a mastermind, man. He was a mastermind of creating global hood music. And, and I, appreciate for, I appreciate him for that. And just the brother he was, every time I saw him, man, he, he welcomed me with open arms. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the humble person that he was and, and, and the music that he made is timeless. So salute, brother. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a fifty thousand dollar car. My whole angle always was, I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It would be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV back for that WA? Yo MTV is just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.